thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Sorreo. I am here today at Trump National Golf Club, joined by Executive Chef Chris Garasik. Chris, first of all, thanks for having us in your kitchen today here Hello at, at Trump. and welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, we are talking about some, some lighter things that people like to eat in the summertime. Sure. It seems like everybody's palate changes a little bit from, from the winter to the summer. Absolutely. Let's talk about that. What kind of things do people sort of ask you for in the summertime? Well, the, de the beach diet definitely takes effect in okay. the summertime. You know, everyone's <laughs> sure. watching the weight. Everyone wants to hit the beach and, <laughs> right. and look as best they can. Uh, so we transition into a little bit lighter fare, you know, a lot of seafood, a lot of, a lot of fruits, a lot of uh, fresh heirloom veggies uh, are really popular, you know, in the summertime. Uh, try to avoid all the carbs we can. Of course. Right? And so a lot of, like I said, a lot of uh, lean uh, proteins okay. and a lot of really healthy, uh, vibrant vegetables that, that are popping in the summer. And I know a lot of fun salads, too, as we were talking about um, off camera a minute ago. Mm -hmm. People like to eat a lot of salads, and I'm always amazed at the different things you put in salads. Sure. How do you sort of know what goes with what in a salad? Well, you kind of kind of feed off, uh, obviously, what's in season. Okay. Right? You want to kind of start there. But also, you have to incorporate, as a chef, what you like to eat as of well. Of course, so, absolutely. Uh, the salad I made today, is a, it's a vibrant salad, okay. sort of hearty at the same time. Uh, what we did is a grilled uh, vine ripened nectarine salad. Mm. We have a little red endive, uh, wild arugula, goat cheese, toasted pecans, oh, baby heirloom delicious. tomatoes, and a little saffron couscous to give it a, a little umph, you know. So I like to try to make a meal out of a salad. Absolutely, that's a meal. And incorporate all of those uh, definitely healthful and, and, and bountiful things for, for your body, all I, those uh, good nutrients. I think people always think of maybe just a chef salad or a you know a Caesar salad, but you see something like this and it's like, oh, I'll take that. Yeah, you have to it's get a little fun. bit more creative. There's so many other options available, especially now. Absolutely. Um, you know, everything's popping and growing and like crazy with the, with the great weather that we have here. So. Um, it's always good to introduce a, a salad like this and just kind of think outside the box a little bit. Is it fun to be able to create things like that, especially in the summertime when people come in, they want something different? Oh, absolutely. And we're on the verge of, so this next month, we're going to be uh, uh, really working hard on transitioning our menus. Oh, so, uh, lots of fun stuff So look forward to, uh, let's see, July, August should be, uh, we should have some new menu items ready and available, okay. which I'm very excited for. And we'll be featuring certain things like this and a plethora of other things. <laughs> So coming out of Trump National now, but especially in August when we have a new menu. Now, a salad like this, on a scale from 1 to 10, is that easy to make, hard to make for some, someone watching at home? It's super easy to make. Okay. Uh, just You just have to get the ingredients. Uh, you know, cutting the nectarine Ahead around the time, seed yeah. is going to be the most That's difficult the part about the, the salad. Okay. But the cool thing is, um, and this is a kind of a cool trick, is the, the skin on the nectarine, once you, so you're going to slice it off, right? Okay. And you're going to grill that slice part face down. Ah. So when you flip it over and you just let it sit for maybe about 30 seconds to a minute, the heat from the grill actually takes the skin right off. Wow. For you. And so. then what kind of a grill do you use to cook the nectarine on? Uh, I used a propane uh, gas grill, okay. but you can use any sort of grill. Uh, oh. Wood would be preferable because of the flavor. You have the hickory, right? Yeah. yeah, that would be excellent. Okay, so tell us what we're about to make today. Well, you're going to make it. I'm just going to enjoy watching you. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I chose today is, uh, you know, uh, again, a fun sort of seasonal dish incorporating some uh, seasonal products that are that are really beautiful right now. Okay. We have uh, Alaskan halibut, mm. we have English peas, we have vine ripened tomatoes, um, fennel, wild arugula, which is all really uh, in season and uh, at its peak right now. Okay. So, uh, Let's get started. Let's get started. Absolutely. Okay. okay, great. So I'm gonna heat the pan up. Okay. Uh, for the halibut first, because that's gonna take the longest. Take the longest. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna use a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil. Okay. While the pan's heating up, I'm gonna season uh, the uh, presentation side of the fish with a little bit of kosher salt. Okay. What's and the difference between kosher salt and regular salt? Uh, kosher salt is more of a flaked off uh, crystal salt. Okay. Um, iodized salt is, uh, it's super, super salty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, this actually has better flavor and brings mm. more flavor out in certain products, whereas iodized is, is more of that table salt that right. really punch you in the mouth type yes. of uh, that saltiness. That you need very little of. Yes, yeah, very little. Very little. Um, I prefer kosher salt or sea salt, um, Himalayan salt, any sort of, of, of really nice salt, okay. finishing salt. Um, they, they have smoked salt. I mean, there's there's a tons of salts out there. So that you just use. put that on one side though, right? One side of the fish. Correct, I okay. season the presentation side first. Okay. Uh, because that's what the guest is gonna see and that's where you want your best sear on the fish. Okay. 
So let's see, let's test our pan. Needs a little, little bit more. And those, that looks like a, a thick cut of fish too. Yeah, for the dish today, I'm, I, I cut it into medallions instead of a filet. So okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a, uh, in the presentation, it's gonna take up most of the plate instead of the traditional just sort of. Got know, it. Uh, protein, veg, starch right. type of uh, angle. So I'm, it's more about the presentation when I cut it this way rather than uh, flavor or anything uh, regarding that. Now, I have to ask you a question. I know that you are a judge on MasterChef. Yes. And chefs have become so huge now on television. Have you seen the difference, people recognizing more chefs and being more interested in cooking? Absolutely. It's uh, it's definitely uh, very popular right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of on the downside, I think, but over the past 10 years plus, yeah. I mean, it's been a craze. I mean, I'm sort everybody, of obsessed with it. <laughs> I mean, foodism has become yeah, very thing, popular. You know, right. people people strive to go out, try new places, and I think it gives a lot of chefs uh, a lot of creative outlets, and it gets them more excited because there's people. You know, you can express yourself through that, and you're almost, uh, you know, you're basically an artist. Absolutely. So people follow that, right. and so uh, I think a lot of people not only love to go out and try and eat good food, but they like to try to do it at home as well. Absolutely, so. just like our viewers do. So tell us what we're gonna do next here. So the oil, as you can see, we Gets call it- Gets a little it, bit hot. Yeah, we call it dancing. Oh, okay, um, dancing you can, oil. You can tell um, when it's the right temperature, when it moves uh, really fluid, almost like water. Which is a great tip. Yes, okay. uh, that's how you know sort of your pan's ready. Oh. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently put the pan, or the, the season side down. Okay. And we can hear that sizzling too, which is always fun. And put the other one in. Okay, so we're just gonna let these sort of sear on one side. Okay, and usually how long does that take to sear? A piece like this, um, we're gonna sear it for a good minute. Okay. Based on the temperature of the pan right now, mm -hmm. we're gonna give it a good minute. And we're gonna probably, we're gonna finish it in the pan, so we're gonna cook it a little bit lower. Okay. Um, a little bit longer. All right. Uh, typically, when we're on the line in the kitchen, uh, we'll sear it on each side real quick, and Quickly. then we'll finish it in the oven. All right. So right now, we're going to do slow and low um, in a pan, and then um, so we'll give it about a minute, minute and a half on this side till it's like a little golden brown. Okay. And then we'll flip it um, again, another good sear, and then we'll turn the heat down and just let it cook and do its thing. You know, I know you grew up in the Portland area. You talk about rustic cooking. What does that mean? What does rustic cooking mean to you? Uh, rustic cooking basically means uh, to me, you know, not not really uh, taking raw product and not really fabricating, you know, it to the crap out of it, if you will. Okay, like other, you mean natural flavors. Natural flavors, okay. keeping it as natural as possible, using some, you know, rustic cooking technique, which is, you know, braising, smoking, roasting, mm. you know, things of that nature. Also, you know, I, I grew up, you know, in the wilderness at my fingertips. So, you know, picking berries, hunting, fishing, all these things were at our, our fingertips when we were growing up. So, you know, uh, it was not, it was accustomed, you know, we were accustomed to, you know, during summertime, having these big barbecues. You Absolutely. Know, you know, my friend would have caught the salmon, somebody else would have picked the mushrooms, and you know, da, 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 and all, all of a sudden you have a big barbecue. And, and so you would party, be the so. one to cook the salmon, right? <laughs> you always, yeah, I always get delegated. Okay. I was always delegated to, to, Did you, as you the always know, know you wanted to be a chef? I started cooking just as a job. Okay. Uh, my mom is a career waitress. Uh, she's actually a waitress here at the club. That's right. Um, so that's how I initially got into it. But I was only doing it, you know, part time when I was going to school, and then in the summertime, you know. Uh, but that was it. And after uh, high school, I went and played a year of baseball at a junior college in Portland. Okay. And. I figured, I was like, you know what, I, I gotta start working, I gotta do something, and what was I good at, and Here I was we good are. at cooking. So I jumped in full force and, and pursued this. I would say very good, because you went to culinary school, and then within a year, you were working down here in Los Angeles. Yeah, my first job was uh, at the Napa Rose, yes. in downtown Disney, That's at the, pretty the cool. Grand, Grand California Hotel. Love it. Yeah. So what kind of experience was that like? It was an amazing experience. <laughs> uh, so, so the fish is ready to turn. Okay. Um, I can kind of tell by the sides it's getting a little um, nice and golden brown. Okay. So I'm just gonna do a quick flip of it, and if you can see, we got a really nice sear. Oh yeah. And a really nice color. And the smell. I wish you all could smell. This is just amazing. You can just smell it. it. Smells great. So we're gonna let that do its thing. We're gonna okay. again keep it on a high um, high temperature just for about another minute, and then I'm gonna turn it down, and we're gonna move on to the the English pea risotto. And how do you 
avoid really burning fish? Because I know a lot of people don't realize it cooks pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, um, to avoid burning it, again, the safest bet um, is to sear it like I'm doing now okay. and just finish it in the oven. All right. Let the oven do its do its thing because uh, that way it's going to keep all the moisture inside. It cooks If through. you keep okay. it on a high heat like this, it's going to dry, dry it out. out. Right. Okay. Um, like no, like nobody's business. Okay. And you'll, you'll have don't want to do that. You'll have sawdust by the yeah. by the time it's by the time <laughs> it's finished. And it'll be maybe like this big. I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that's looking good. So I'm just going to turn this down uh, and just A let, it, bit. let okay. it roll. All right. Um, now risotto. Risotto is something that we often hear is very very tricky to make. It is. Uh, it's a very delicate grain. You have to cook it right uh, initially. Toast it right, um, pre-cook it correctly, okay. or you'll end up with oatmeal. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So Don't it's uh, it is definitely delicate. So initially, um, how we do it in the restaurant is we par cook it. Um, so we toast the grains. Okay. We add a little bit of uh, onions and garlic. Mm. Saute that. Uh, no color. You don't want any color. So it's a very Just, low flame, okay. low heat, uh, until the uh, garlic and shallot or garlic and um, onions are translucent. Mm -hmm. We hit it with a little white wine, um, a little chicken stock if you want, or water if you're a vegan. Okay. Uh, and then after that, we'll, we'll just cook it till, till about halfway. We'll spread it on a sheet tray, put it in the, uh, and then cool it down. Where do people make their biggest mistakes with risotto, do you think? Uh, it would be that process. Okay. <laughs> Because um, if you if you mess that up uh, from the start, start over. It, it, yeah, it's definitely a start over type right. type of deal. So I have um, so what I have here is an English pea puree. Okay. Um, English peas that are, have been blanched, some mascarpone cheese, mm -hmm. garlic and shallots, a little Parmesan cheese to finish, oh. and our our par cooked risotto. All flavors that we love. Yes. How do you sort of know how you can experiment with different flavors when you're making something? Is it just tasting it and seeing if you like it, or? I think it's per person, your palate and how you perceive, perceive it. Okay. Um, but also, you have to sort of open your palate to different flavors and textures. Right. So it's it's sort of a, an experimental thing. Is Lily Amini your taste tester here? You can tell us. The oh, truth. absolutely. She's <laughs> she's my immediate go-to. Good. That's great. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off with a little bit of olive oil again. Okay. And we're just going to get in the pan. I think olive oil always gives some everything a really good taste too. It is, especially when you use a really good olive oil mm -hmm. and um, you know, you you finish a product with it, not heating it, not cooking it. It's got this the flavor, the flavor is, is is just it can make a dish, you know, just Elevate just it. the oil alone. Mm -hmm. um, so the oils Nice and hot, it's dancing in the in the in the pot in the pan for us. Okay. So we're gonna add our uh, garlic and shallots. All right. Okay, now it's gonna really smell good here. And we are just going to break this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you put you can really prepare everything ahead of time too, right? Absolutely. Before we get ready to cook. Oh yeah, that uh, we call it mise en place, which is uh, everything in its place. Okay. And um, so basically, the more prepared you are. The, the more easier. successful <laughs> yeah. you're going to be. Okay. Uh, it's easier to um, have things at your fingertips, and it's it's it makes things a lot more difficult when you are not prepared and don't have them because uh, it just becomes chaotic at that point, <laughs> especially when you're trying to feed a lot, a of, lot people of people at one time. Yes, of course. So now that they're sort of a little wilted, um, not 100% translucent, but we've got the uh, the flavor. Mm, that and the aroma. We're oh, gonna I hit love it that. with a little bit of white wine. Okay. Always good. And then just to deglaze the pan and give the risotto a little bit of flavor. And we're going to reduce this just okay. by so about So a little half. bit of heat. And that's we want to cook the alcohol it. out of it. You do want to cook it out? Yes. Okay. I know, that's not the fun part. But. No, but it smells amazing, <laughs> so I'm loving all of this, believe me. You know, it's funny. I'm kind of obsessed with these cooking shows because you see chefs that are, are you know, executive chefs, master chefs. Is it nerve-wracking for them to have to be on television doing everything? 
You know, I think, again, it's per person. <laughs> yes. uh, I had a very difficult time initially um, when I got in front of a camera, but I was always like that when I was a kid. Okay. So um, with my last company, they, they gave me a lot of uh, training. Yes, and we're going to loosen you up here, so yeah. it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. What so you, I got some media training at, my, at my last, the last company I was with, which, which helped, but I still have my moments of, of uh, that stage fright. Oh, I, I mean, I can't even imagine, <laughs> even on some of the shows, like you have to just think of something to cook in two minutes, and then you have to cook it, and then has to be amazing, you know. Yes. No, no but no pressure. Yeah, no, no pressure. pressure. Never, never no. pressure. <laughs> so as you see, we, it's reduced a little bit, oh, so yeah. we reduced it by about half, okay. if not more. And this is where I'm going to add my risotto. All right. Risotto. Mm. Now, do you always cook the risotto this way? Yes. Okay. Uh, again, we par cook it just mm -hmm. to stay ahead on on the. Uh, on the uh, timing, timing mm -hmm. for the the uh, regular kitchen uh, the cook line. Okay. So I'm gonna break it up just a little bit, kind of warm it up, and then I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of chicken stock. Okay. I'm not gonna add too much because it, again it is part cooked, mm -hmm. and we're also gonna add the English pea puree, and that hat contains some moisture too, which the grains of rice will soak up. Okay. So it's a you have to really balance it out. Again, this takes. Sometimes it just takes time and doing it repetitiously over and over again to actually figure out the correct consistency. consistency yes. Because you can follow a recipe, but you give yeah. one recipe to 10 different people, you're right. gonna have 10 different, 10 different, yes, <laughs> 10 different outcomes, results. absolutely. Right, so a lot of it's trial and error, but. Um, it's much better when you have an executive chef standing next to you too, because <laughs> you know what you're doing. Right. <laughs> and then the fish is still kind of lightly cooking over yes. here, right? Okay. Yeah, we got that on low, okay. and um, by the feel of it, it's it's about done. Now, halibut is a very lean fish, so again, you do not want to overcook it because it dries out very quickly. Right. Wow. So now, what about for desserts in the summertime? What are like favorite desserts? My go-to is always berries. Okay. Berries or berries some sort of... Berries with ice cream or gelato yeah, like, or... You know, a berry tart, mm. a black, blackberry cobbler, Yum. blueberry cobbler. Um, I love berries. You know, growing up, that's... We couldn't wait for the summertime because that was like nature's candy. Berries. Our whole property was uh, blackberries. Nice. So it was just, I mean, we'd come back with like purple faces. <laughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> That's great though. Yeah, it was It was really cool. We so might I have to do the desserts on the next show. Yeah, and, and you know, Ron, our pastry chef, is amazing. He's amazing. At what he does. Oh, we love Ron. Ron is really great. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a little bit of the English pea risotto. This is going to give it some flavor and some color, of course. Okay. And those are just peas, right? Yeah, these are just peas that are lightly blanched Ooh. and uh, pureed. Very little nice. Little salt, little pepper. Um, the uh, the peas will sort of tighten up in the blender once you start pureeing them. Okay. So you can just add a little bit of water to thin them out. Uh, not too much, you know, just a couple, maybe tablespoon or teaspoon at a time until you get the right consistency. And how are English peas different from other kinds of peas? Just um, not they're they're really sort no of difference. Same. Okay. Um, the English pea is sort of the, I don't want to say generic pea, but it is sort of the one you, most common okay. you'll see. All right. Um, so that, that's the one I go to, and they're so beautiful right now. Okay. It does give it a nice color. Yeah, so we're going to let that cook into the rice before we finish it with a little bit of the Parmesan. Okay. And, mm. um, and the mascarpone cheese. Okay. So I'm going to season it again, uh, season it with a little bit of kosher salt. I can almost taste it just from smelling all of it now. It's so amazing. And some uh, white pepper. Okay. And difference between white pepper and black pepper? One's white and one's black. <laughs> but it's still uh, the, the flavor, same The flavor flavors. profile is way different. Uh, really? White pepper, you really have to be, white pepper is more of like a finishing of, of like Berblancs, butter sauces, something that you won't see it visually in the sauce. It won't stand out like black oh, pepper. Okay. But it, you have to be very delicate when you use it because you will overpower a dish with white pepper. Is it still sort of hot? Yes, it has that, that smell. It smells like it's hot. Okay. It does. <laughs> so you have to be careful. But it, it's such a different flavor profile um, from, from the black pepper. Okay. And black pepper I use mostly for red meats, roasting, um, heavy sauces, things, things like, like that, that, where you mm -hmm. want more of a deeper, deeper flavor. Okay, so this is ready, and I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to fold in some of the English pe fresh English, pe Ooh, English peas. Those look great. We're going to add some Parmesan cheese. Oh. And then about a tablespoon 
of the mascarpone. Yum. Mm. And we're just gonna. Now, on a scale from one to ten, how difficult is this to make? Is this again? The rice is just getting the rice right is the hardest That's part. The, hardest part huh? the rest of it is is really simple. Or you can just come here and chef will make it for you. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> That's I pretty even much easier, live right? here and I'm here all the time, so <laughs> come on in. That works too. <laughs> So as you can see, it's all coming together nice. Yeah. It's a little creamy texture. And now the heat's off now too, so we're yeah, just sort of letting off. everything melt together. And now it's almost time to start thinking about plating. Plating, okay. Now, I have to finish one thing, which is the freshest part of the dish. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little wild arugula, uh, fennel salad. Okay. So I have wild arugula and I've, I've shaved some fennel really thin. Okay. And I let it sit in some lemon water so it doesn't discolor. All right. I'm gonna season it with a little bit salt and pepper. Okay. And I have a lemon uh, vinaigrette. So olive oil, a little sugar, a little salt, a little pepper, and uh, fresh lemon juice. Now do you eat like this at home too, Chris? I know you're always here, but. Uh, I try. I've learned my lesson not to get too creative at home. Okay. <laughs> uh, just because uh, time is valuable, mm, and I course. spend so much time here that when I'm at home, I, I tend to try to focus on catching up on other things. Other things. Yes. Uh, so we're gonna set this aside. Okay. I'm just gonna put that right in front of you. All right. Um, Looks great. And then we're gonna start assembling the dish. Okay. So here I have two um, vine ripened red tomatoes. Okay. They're oven dried, so what I did is basically cut it in half, scoop the seeds out, season salt, pepper, um, and herbs, garlic, put it in an oven about 200 degrees, and just let it do its thing, and it uh, turns into like this lovely, nice, sun-dried tomato. Very nice. Still a little texture to it. Not, I mean, you're not gonna like chomp on it, but uh, it does have a little bit of texture. Okay. But also the sweetness should be, uh, you know, the tomatoes are so good right now when you dry them that way, mm. it's like that natural sugar comes out. Is that out. basil inside? Yes, there's basil, mm, oregano, basil. Uh, again, salt, pepper, and fresh garlic. Okay. All right, so the dish itself. Now so, here's where the artistic beauty comes into everything yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do, uh, since I did the medallions, we're just gonna set it up. Now, plating is such an art in itself. Is this something that you learn while you're in culinary school or you sort of figure out after, or both? I think you, this is where the chef becomes the artist. Okay. Um, how they, you visualize the plate itself, the shape of the plate, the ingredients you're using, it all sort of plays into um, how you're gonna set it up. Okay. Um, so, we're gonna do. We're gonna put the medallions on top, and I'm okay. gonna sort of build around it okay. until until we get to that point. So here we have a little basil pesto, and I'm just going to. And again, ingredients you can all get ready ahead of time so that you know you can just sort of assemble everything at one time. But look at that. I'm just gonna do some swooshes on the side. And you want to just get the right amount of flavors in all of these things, so you know not to overpower it with putting a lot of pesto because that's such a, a vibrant right. flavor. Right, you never want to overpower. You always want a little bit. You want, you want them to sort of make friends on the plate. Yes, if you <laughs> I will. like that. Make friends on the plate. That's nice. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to set the oven dried tomato up on each side. Okay. Uh, the salad is going to go right in the middle. Mm. Look at that. So pretty. Bring and here the comes fish. the fish. Look at that. Again, I wish everybody could smell what I am smelling right now because it's just unbelievably amazing. Look at that. So it's dinner for two. Yep. Yeah, you can definitely share this. Um, this is actually the size of a, a regular entree. I just broke it Huge. down. Huge. So it looks, it looks quite looks big. Looks big, yes. Yeah. And then uh, to finish it, we have our Meyer lemon butter. Okay. Uh, this sauce is a little bit complicated to explain because okay. uh, it's a process, but is if something... anybody at home wants the recipe, you can always come down and uh, I'll definitely give it to you. Okay, so. that's nice. This is a uh, uh, blanc is basically a reduction of white wine, uh, vinegar, shallots, thyme, 
uh, bay leaf and peppercorn. Okay. Reduce that to almost au sec, which is meaning uh, almost dry. Okay. And then you hit it again with some heavy cream, reduce that down, and then you whisk cold butter into that. So you'll be going over to people's houses to make to show them how to make this. Yes, that would it's it's, <laughs> it's definitely a it's a little process, okay. a little bit of a process. Okay. So all we're gonna do now is just we're gonna touch it with a little of the nice with the pepper block. And there we are. Beautiful. Very seasonal, very fresh, very light. Um, that's my halibut dish for the day. Okay, now really there's only one thing left to do now sure. is to taste it. Absolutely. Right? And you're going to have to use a fork. Okay, a spoon. I'll use, you know what? I could use a spoon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a bite of the halibut. Oh my lord, this looks amazing. Okay. Mm. So good. Light, flavorful. The fish is cooked perfectly. I feel like I'm on one of those shows now. <laughs> Excellent. Chris, thank you so much for being with us thank today. Thank you for coming in. It was and great to see you. And cooking something light. And that will do it for this episode of Around the Peninsula. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time. I'm going to keep eating. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Love these nectarines. Mm.